Hey guys and welcome to another C++ and game tutorial. Today I'm going to be teaching you about default parameters and structures and they're both really simple so I figured I'd just teach them to you in one episode. So first let's learn about default parameters. Uh, let's make a function uh, that does something useful, something we might use in our games. Let's make a print error function. This will print out an error to the screen and we can call it from anywhere in our code. So I'm going to do a, do a for declaration up here. So we'll say void print error and we know we're going to need a string s so that'll be the error message but what if we also want to uh, print our error to a file like an error log uh, so that if they crash or something they'll still have a file with all of their error messages uh, maybe we don't always want to do that what we could do is have a bool uh, print to file and if print to file is true then we're going to print our error message to a file as well as the screen so it'll be like errors.txt or something uh, if it's false, we won't do that. We'll only print it to the screen. And we could also have like a bool pause program or something like that. Uh, you probably won't have this bool. I'm just adding some extra bools just to show you why default parameters are useful. You'll probably always want to pause it if you have an error. All right, so this is a forward declaration. So I'm going to do that and paste the implementation down here. If you want, you can just put the implementation up here, but I'm going to go ahead and do it this way. All right, so now... What I want to do is first uh, just print out the string. So we'll do print f, and since it's a string, you do percent %s, and I'll do a new line. And then you can't just put s here. That's not going to work. Percent %s takes a c string, so you have to say s dot c -ster, like that. Otherwise, you're just going to get a bunch of garbage. Now, if we print to file, then we're going to open up a file and print out. So let's say if print to file, like that, if that is equal to true. All right, so, and actually, uh, when you're using a Boolean, uh, since it's already a true or false value, you don't have to say equal to true, because that's like saying if true is equal to true, like that doesn't make sense. Instead, you can just do this. So if print to file is true, the inside of this if statement is true, otherwise it's false. It kind of makes sense. So if print to file. All right, so let's go ahead and include fstream. Include fstream. That is our if stream and of stream functions so we can print out to, to files so i'm going to open an of stream of stream for output and i'm going to call it file and i'm going to go ahead and use the constructor to open the file on the same line instead of using file.open and i believe it takes just a normal string i don't think you need a c string so we'll do that and oh actually we're not opening s we're going to open something like errors.txt like that so that'll put an errors.txt file Actually, let's let's give it a more professional name. Uh, Errorlog.txt, and that will get put in our uh, directory with the executable, which I can show you how to get to in a second. All right, so that'll open it. We should always check if file.fail. Uh, we should <laughs> print out an error because the error wasn't able to print. Kind of funny. So we'll p error errorlog.txt. This should never happen, but if it does, something is horribly wrong, and we'll go ahead and just return, I guess. All right, otherwise, we're going to go ahead and just uh, print out to the file. So we'll say file s, and let's go ahead and do an indel. And then uh, you don't have to close the file uh, because at the end of the if statement, it will automatically close. Since we declared file inside this if statement, its scope is inside the if statement. So as soon as it gets out of these braces, uh, file will be gone. So you, for instance, uh, you can't access file out here. It's going to give me an error because its scope is inside this if statement. I actually, I actually haven't made a video on scope, I don't think. Uh, maybe I should do that. Uh, all right, so that's going to print it out. I'm going to go ahead and call file.close, even though it closes automatically, just, just because. All right, so now that's going to print it to file. And then we can also say if pause program uh, is equal to true, which we don't have to do that because it's a Boolean. If pause program... Then we're going to do uh, C out. Actually, printf, I'll be consistent here. Printf, enter any key to continue, dot, 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 and slash n. Actually, no slash n. And then C, or then like an int temp, just a temporary variable. Or let's make it a char, actually. Char temp and cn temp. If we made it an int and they typed in a char, we would get a weird error. So I'd like to use a char. Alrighty, so that's our print error function. So if we wanted to print an error, say we got some crappy error, print error, um, our message, our error string might be file does not 
exist. And then, yeah, we want to print it to file, and yeah, we want to pause the program. Now, we're almost always going to want to print to file, and we're almost always going to want to pause the program. So why should we keep having to type comma true, comma true every time we call print error all over our program if it's most of the time going to be that? Well, we don't have to. We can use something called default parameters. So to use default parameters, you go to your function declaration. Uh, so that's this one up here, the prototype. And you just say, starting from right to left, you can say equal your default parameter. So since this is a Boolean, I'm going to say equal true. And then I'll put a equal true here as well. So now what's going to happen is if I get rid of this comma true, comma true, it'll still work. And what it's going to do is use those default parameters. But if I don't want to use those default parameters, I could put like a false in here. So now it's not going to print to file, but it's still going to pause the program. If I put comma false again, now it'll print to file and pause the program. Uh, you can't do uh, this where you, where you say this is not a default parameter, but this is. It has to be from right to left only default parameters. Like you can't have a default parameter and then a parameter that doesn't have a default parameter because then otherwise uh, basically the, the call site isn't going to know which one is default or not. So we're going to go ahead and make both of these default parameters. Cool. So now you've learned about default parameters. Let's go ahead and run the program and see how it works. Uh, run it. Maybe we'll get errors. File does not exist. Cool, it printed our error message and it paused the program. And let's see if it made a little uh, a little error prompt. So let's open up, uh, how do we how do we get to it? I believe we go, you right click here and open folder in File Explorer. Pretty sure this is right. Uh, yes, and here we go. We get error log.txt if we open it up. There's our file does not exist error. Really cool. And if we really wanted to be neat, we could put like a time and date whenever we print out the error message so people wouldn't know when the error happened. All right, so that is errors. Uh, let me also show you if, you if you try to put equals true here and equals true here, it's going to give you an error. You only put the default parameter thing on the function declaration or the, the prototype. You don't do it in both places. Uh, it just gives you an error if you do that. Uh, it's going to, you don't have to put it here, it's going to know that it's using default parameters. And if we didn't have a function prototype, then it would work fine because we can put, I believe, equals true, equals true. I believe that'll work. Could be wrong. Yes, that does work. All right, so yeah, as long as you, uh, if you have a prototype, you put the equals true or equals 10 or whatever, you put it there, you don't put it in the actual implementation. Okay, so there's our print error. I'm going to go ahead and delete this. Let's learn about structs. So let's say we have, we'll say we're making a 3D game, okay? And we want to make a block class. Say we're like making a Minecraft clone. So we could have class block, okay? Uh, something like this. Now, uh, let's say we don't want our block to have any functions. Uh, we just want it to have data. We're going to basically say the block has, we'll say public, and we'll say like the block has an int uh, block ID. Uh, it has a int texture ID or something, which we'll learn about when we get to graphics. It might have like a, a char uh, red, char green, char blue, uh, and we'll actually say unsigned char. So remember an unsigned char is just a number between 0 and 255. So if you've ever worked with uh, like uh, any any texture art or, or using paint or really anything where you specify colors for things, you'll notice they usually use an RGB color value from 0 to 255. So here we have our basic block. Now I could have made these private and then did uh, getters and setters, but this class right here is pretty much just data. It's not functionality, it's not functions. So because it's just data, it's okay to, it's, it's fine to have public here and just access things publicly. So we can make a block down here, block, um, uh, dirt block. And then we could say dirt block dot block ID equals one or something like that. So that's its block ID. Well, that's really cool. Uh, but we don't have to make a class. What you're also going to see is you're going to see people making a struct. Now a struct and a class are exactly the same thing, except a struct is public by default, a class is private by default. So with a class, if I have class block and I forget to put public here, this down here is going to give me an error, right? Because it's inaccessible. Dirt block, uh, 
the block ID value for dirt block is private because classes are private by default. Now if I change this class block to struct block, now it's going to work just because structs are public. That's the only difference. If I wanted to make it like the class uh, that, that's private by default, I could just type private here and now it's exactly the same. So that's pretty much all you need to know about structs, uh, other, other than the fact that you should not be putting functions in structs really. Whenever you see the word struct, it means uh, the programmer has designated this object to be just pretty much variables, just data, like a record, maybe like a record of a student's name, his phone number, or something like that. It's, it's, it's not going to have functions in it. It's not going to do anything. There's going to be functions elsewhere that use this struct to do interesting things, but this struct itself is not going to do anything. So when you see struct, you really shouldn't have functions. I do put a constructor sometimes in my functions that might like give default values to everything. Uh, that can be really useful, uh, but if everything is going to be initialized to zero, there's actually a cool trick you can do uh, so you don't need a constructor. You can do this. You can say block dirt block equals this, uh, just two curly braces. If you do this little trick right here, what it does is it makes sure everything in your struct is initialized to zero. It just sets all of these bytes to zero. If you don't do that, you're going to have uninitialized memory. So let's see what the difference is. Let's not initialize block ID. Let's see out it. So we're going to say see out dirt block dot block ID. And remember, we can access it because this is public by default. And L. So let's see what we get if it's uninitialized memory. Error. Uh, lo uninitialized local variable. Oh, it's giving me a. <laughs> it it Visual Studio knows it's uninitialized, so it's getting mad at me. All right, so I can't, I, I don't think I can force it to, to do this. But okay, you get the idea, it's uninitialized. However, if I say equals this, now it should not give me the error. There we go, and we get a zero. It's like magic, it's a cool little shortcut. All right, so you've learned about structs and uh, default parameters today. We are getting dangerously close to the graphics tutorials where we're gonna be doing a lot more fun stuff. We've learned a lot of C++, but there's a ton more. C++ is a huge language with lots of really cool stuff. However, do know that you are pretty far into C++ and you could really start making your own little programs. Now, there's not a whole lot that you're missing out on. And of course, you can go watch other tutorials, but I would like you to always come back and watch my tutorials. Uh, so yeah. Uh, let's see, is there anything else that I need to tell you about blocks? Uh, sorry, about structs. Um, oh yeah, since structs are classes, uh, you can pretty much do without structs if you want to. You can only use classes in your code, that's fine. Uh, so you could just do this. Uh, this if you do it this way, it, ac it actually is kind of a good thing because you're not going to have um, as many constructs. Uh, not, not that that really matters at all. Um, if it's just like, you'll know that an object is always a class. You won't have to think, is this a class or a struct? Uh, but structs are also kind of cool because they logically tell you that this object is not just a class with functions. It's a class with no functions, and it's just uh, data. So yeah, I hope you, hope you learned a, a little something. Uh, see you next time.